What's up Star Wars fans, welcome to another Star Wars SH Figure Arts action figure review. This time I've got one of the holy grails of Star Wars SH Figure Arts and it's Qui-Gon Jinn. Um, I picked this up off of eBay, um, it seems to be the only place to get it now, and uh, I'm just so, so happy to have this in my collection. There are a few figures that are getting extremely out of hand price-wise. Um, I was patient, I waited, I got it for a a reasonable price um, in comparison to a lot of others out there um, but there are a couple that really do just creep up in price um, one being Padme Amidala uh, uh, from Attack of the Clones and also most recently the New Hope version of Chewbacca they're both really jumping up in price um, which is kind of ridiculous but I mean you've got to, got to stay on top of this line if you don't want to pay through the nose. Um, I've learned that. <laughs> I've learned that now. And uh, yeah, I'll be sure to pre-order any that I really, really want to get in the future, specifically the online um, exclusives, which is, this is one of them. Um, and you can see because of the different box, it doesn't have the window box like the regular releases do. Um, so the Exile look came like this. Um, just blanking on a couple more. I'm very excited to have Qui-Gon with Obi-Wan and Maul. Um, they were the first two uh, SH Figure Arts figures I got, and that's probably what caused the downfall, <laughs> to be honest. Um, this is great. I'm really, really thrilled to have Qui-Gon Jinn, so we'll get a look at the box. So a good picture of Qui-Gon on the front. Shot of him on the back. Done a pretty good job capturing his likeness. There he is there as well. A couple other shots where they sort of feature the two different head sculpts, or face sculpts anyway. Um, some different poses. And there he is battling Maul. So there it is. It's the box. We'll get that out of the way. And firstly, we'll get a look at his accessories. So, he comes with an unlit lightsaber hilt. As well as the lit blade that is in his hands, obviously. Um, that lightsaber also came with the Episode 1 Obi-Wan Kenobi. So you could redo that scene from the end where Obi-Wan force pulls Qui-Gon's lightsaber to him to cut them all in half. Alright, so we've got two sort of Force suggest hands. I'm going to sort of force mind trick. You have two open hands for a force push. We have two fists. And we have two of these sort of semi open angular, angular lightsaber gripping hands. That just allows a little bit of flexibility in the movement and which direction you want to have the blade. And we have these closed, we have two closed hands uh, for the lightsaber blade as well. For the hilt, I'm sorry. Um, and also, we have a swap out head sculpt. Um, in my opinion, this is very scene specific. The moment the blade goes through his guts, um, Thanks, Darth Maul. I'm not sure why they did this. They could have done something a little different. It just looks a little bit specific to that particular moment, but never mind. So let's get a look. All right, so here's the face that I think is the one that most people would display him with. It looks good. Really great likeness. Um, it's something a lot of toy companies have had issues with in the past. I know Hasbro has had a lot of a lot of difficulty in the past trying to get that head sculpt right, particularly with his with his side hair there. That's that's the thing that's it's hard to do in plastic um, without it looking a bit silly because it is. Part of his back hair there, part of his Jedi mullet. Um, but he has two bits that come down the front, which is, it's a little strange. And uh, it's hard to get it to look right, but Bandai have done a pretty good job here. 
I'm pretty impressed with it anyway. A nice vibrant green blade. So just get a look around. Pay close attention to the belt because with the little details, there's buckles, there's buttons, there's the food cylinders, there's pouches, there's more cylinders there. Little buttons. More pouches. They look pretty great. More little cylinders in the middle there. Going down further to his pants and his boots. Pretty well done. It's a nice looking figure. It's got all the all the good SH figure arts articulation. I've stated so many times that I, there's too much articulation for me to read out. Um, I could be here all night reading out articulation for this thing, but uh, it's it's really good. Um, so you just have to go with it. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm thrilled to have Qui-Gon Jinn. Um, I was really happy with the Black Series one that Hasbro put out. <sighs> I've been almost two years ago, I think. Um, probably 18 months potentially, I can't remember exactly when. Um, but since Hasbro have put out the photo reel paint deco on the faces, that Qui-Gon's just taken a step back and doesn't quite look as good as it could be. Um, so I'm thrilled to have this one in the collection, particularly after the most recent book, uh, Master and Apprentice by Claudia Gray. Reading a little bit more into Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan's early relationship and getting a little bit more feel for the Jedi um, himself. Qui-Gon's a great character as well. I like the uh, paint-ups on the hair. It looks quite nice. Sort of a lot of them do have is that sort of goldish bronze tinge to her and then some sort of uh, brown wash sort of weathering into the into the finer cracks. We get a nice close look at his face here. He looks pretty damn good. All right, that is Darth. <laughs> That's not Darth Maul. I was looking at Darth Maul. I've got him sitting right here as proof. Um, this is Qui-Gon Jinn from SH Figure Arts, uh, Bandai, Tamashi Nations, all that sort of stuff. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Until my next one, may the force be with you.